Hey guys, welcome back to, uh, to another episode and today I'm going to be showing you how to make four kinds of tensile structures using the Mighty Kangaroo plugin. I will be providing these uh, Rhino models in a link in the description below and uh, I would ask you to please like and subscribe to my channel, it really helps me keep uh, these uh, videos going and uh, feel free also to leave a, a suggestion for a for the kind of video you would like to see in the comments. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So before we start off, make sure you've got your Kangaroo plugin installed. Let's set up a surface and let's add in our surface for our tensile structure here. Let's get ourselves a mesh surface. And now let's subdivide it with a number slider of around 1, 100. Of course this value might be too high so for now I'm just going to bring it down to about 10. You can change this later if you want. Then we can add in naked vertices, place them like that. And also edge lengths for our mesh here. As for the length factor, we can add an inner slider of 1.000. Make it that large there. Okay, and uh, now we can now we need to we need to add in our uh, anchor points. So let's go ourselves and get ourselves a closest closest point. This one here. We can add in our naked points there, and now. Let's get ourselves some curves, so copy and paste this. There's a curve in here, right there, and another one inside this tube here, like that. So we're going to get ourselves some endpoints, and points, connect our curve into there. Also get ourselves a merge, we want to compile all of our points into one component, like this. And in the case of this one, we want to make it a bit, uh, a bit more mobile as, as an example, so we're going to add in an evaluate curve. Let's place our curve into there, copy, copy and uh, paste this. And now we can add in a 1.00 number slider there, add into our, to our parameter. Let's also uh, reparameterize this value as well as this one here. And of course, copy and paste this value into here. Of course, you want one value to be zero and you don't want to be one, 100 to be at the very extremes of our uh, tube, of our pipe. And yes, now we can join them in one and two. We just need to join this one into our point. And now let's add in an anchor. And we, we want to place our closest point into the point itself, but, but our full result into the target. Like that. Okay, so now so now we have we have our two main components for a kangaroo. All we need now is a show to bring in our main geometry. Now having all these components set, we can then add in a solver. Since I want this animation to be seen, I'm going to, to use a bouncy solver. I'm gonna join in one by one all of our elements. Okay, we can already see something popping out there. Let's also add in a button, so that we have a bit more of interactivity around this. And of course, gonna add in a uh, boolean into the on position there. These are the most important elements you want to place here. Okay, let's take a look at our our surface here. Okay, not bad. We can now hide all of these values and uh, also add in a geometry on the on the end here. This way we can, we can make it look a little bit more uh, cleaner. Or this gets just look cleaner. <laughs> can then change this value here, toggle it again, okay, and now we can also play play, play around with the, 
with these values here. So you, you can see here I can adjust this, the tensile structure's height. I'm gonna bring this value, actually I'm gonna bring it up a bit to about 20. Okay. As for the edge factor, I'm probably gonna decrease this one here to make it a bit more elastic. Yeah, that's essentially how you set up a simple tensile structure. Okay guys, for the second example, we're going to be looking at a tensile structure facade design. And uh, in this case, we're going to be able to reuse many of our components, including our, our three main components for our solver. And, and of course, some of, our, some of our original mesh inputs. So to start off real, real simple, let's just set in our surface, like that. Uh, next up, we want to set in our, our anchors. And this, in, in this case, we're going to be using two points and two uh, lines. So let's start off with the points first. And we want to assign multiple points since we're dealing with a point here on the very back and one up front down here like that. Press enter. Next up, let's let's get ourselves two curves. So set multiple curves. Let's select this one and this one here. Press enter, like so. And uh, in this case, we need to sub divide this curve. So let's add in a divide curve a component. Let's add this value into there and our number slider from the very top into, into the count value. Now with the, with the resulting points on both components, we can then add in a merge. Let's place in one and two. We can get rid of this one here. And then add in the point into there and the target into there. We can now hide this. Yeah, and that's essentially how, how, how you get your, your base uh, piece for your tensile structure facade. And now, what you need to do next in order to, to extract this mesh is to gather a list item, bring it into there, and now we can get ourselves a mesh here, place it there, and of course, once you bake this value here, you can then hide all of your code and simply copy this. to the side and of course on all these other measurements so like that and you pretty much keep on copying until you have your complete facade so in this case you can just go into go into here and copy vertically so go in like that and like that here and your facade is now completely set up so for this example I'm going to be showing you how to make a catenary structure using only points and for for this example we will be using our free main components once again as well as our solver Let's start off by setting up our points. So set multiple points, bring them all in. Next up, we want to use a Deloane mesh and also a biparent. And as for the level, I'm going to give it a value of about, of about four. If you place it any any higher than the, the mesh might be a bit harder to load, but uh, that's up to you, of course. And uh, next, we're gonna get ourselves a mesh join. Bring it into there. And now we can connect this into our show and into our mesh here. Okay, now for our, for our anchors, we can simply use our points to serve to serve as our, as our anchors there. 
Of course, if we want to control the height for this kind of structure, we need to uh, add in another type of component into our family here, which is the load, which will allow us to have a sort of uh, gravitational pull. So in this case, for the force vector, you want to use a unit Z. And to make this simple, I'm going to use a number slider of 1.00. Oops, sorry. Uh, 1.00. Add it into there. I'm actually going to stop this animation so it's a lot, so it's a lot easier to uh, move around. And next I'm going to get a uh, mesh deconstruct. Add in your values into there, all of these points. Actually going to bring this number down to about 2 to make it a bit easier and place our vertices into set point. And now with your shift key, let's, let's bring it into the goal objects and let's bring it back into true. Okay, looking nice. We can now make it a bit more complex once again. I'm going to bring this value up to 4 again. And uh, naturally, depending on how, on how you use your Z value down down here it might become overstretched and to change this I'm gonna bring it down to point 10 it will now do some motion here here and there and while it's doing that I will select all of these items and simply hide them to make this a lot easier to look at same thing for the points and uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much how you set up a uh, catenary structure, utilizing only points. And last but not least, I'm going to show you how to make a tent pavilion. For for this one, we're going to go to go back to our th to our three main components and of course our solver so let's start by adding in a surface same thing once again here a surface mesh or mesh surface mesh surface <laughs> bring it into there number started of about one 100 I'm gonna, bring it, I'm gonna bring it down to about 30 I'm gonna bring the, the values into both the, the u and the v count and uh, I can quickly bring this up into the edge lens and into our into our show here. And uh, I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't break down my uh, computer. <laughs> Get some naked vertices here. And uh, in the in this case, we uh, want to deal with two different kinds of anchors. So I'm going to bring this one down down here and for these anchors here we're going to make the naked the uh, naked points the new ones so let's get a closest point first off we can copy and paste this component because we're going to need it down here down here as well and let, let's let's bring in our naked points into our into our cloud and uh, in this case we want to get we want to assign in a curve, specifically our outer curve here, our crown curve. Let's bring it down by exploding it into several different elements. Let's remove all of its duplicate points. And now we can add this one into the point and into our target. And of course, our closest points into the point itself. Let's just test it out and see how it goes first. Okay, very jiggly. Let's close that again. Okay, nice shape. Let's select yet another group of curves. In this case, we want to select multiple curves and we, and we can select all of our central ones here. Press enter, like so. And now we can add in an evaluate curve, bring in curve, and uh, let's add in a 
a num slider of 1.00, place in re re uh, parameterize, and now we can add in our points into there, and into there, and also add in our points into our tangent. And of course, let's use our uh, clothed points this time for our for our cloud. Bring this in into into here, and yeah, that's essentially how we make our tinsel pavilion. Okay, hope you guys like the, this uh, video. Please do not forget to like and uh, subscribe and uh, I hope to see you, see you back here next time.